How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley. And Sundays, I'm back with me. I'm back. I had a beautiful vacation. I had a great couple weeks. Last week, I had a phenomenal person covering the show. Very blessed. We'll talk about that after the break. But man, I'm I'm thrilled to be back, and so much wrestling has happened in the last two weeks. I took I really took a hiatus. I was I I had to spend three days catching up on almost three weeks of professional wrestling, and you know what? A lot is happening. Last night we saw TNA Slammiversary happen in Montreal. Four thousand people in that building. AEW ran their residency in Texas last night with Collision. A brand new set, a brand new building. I have a lot to talk about about that building. I, you know, it's fascinating, right? Because it, it looked beautiful. But sometimes people's expectation is something totally out of the realm of reality. And the discourse happens. So I want to touch on that a little bit. Smackdown last night, continuing the bloodline. And everything that's happening there, leading up to S- S- SummerSlam. We have matches for all in. More matches slowly being announced for that show. A lot of movement in the world of professional wrestling. A lot of movement in the world of sports. A lot of movement in the world of TV rights and TV negotiations with the NBA. Now still in play for Turner. For Warner, sorry. My brain is stuck in 1997, guys, sometimes. The Montreal screw job happened all over again last night. I don't know where I am anymore. But we have a ton to talk about, and I'm thrilled to be here with you guys. After a couple weeks off, I'm ready to talk about professional wrestling once again. When we come back, we're going to have all of this, plus all the news of the last, I guess, two weeks. Because I have some stuff to talk about here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I am thrilled to be back here. For those of you that uh, don't know, I took a couple of weeks hiatus. My wife and I took off to the beautiful island of Jamaica. I needed to totally disconnect from everything. And I seem to have picked the worst week <laughs> to disconnect from everything. A lot happening, obviously. Uh, the attempted assassination attempt on the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, was the big story when I was away. And uh, it was fascinating to see being outside of the country, seeing, you know, how people were reacting. Obviously, I was on a resort filled with Americans, but it was a uh, very unique time to disconnect from all media. And I did. And I, to be honest, I was disconnected from all media. I, I didn't have any social media down there. Very little. I have very little Internet access down there, which was by design. Uh, so when I came back, I had a ton to catch up on. Obviously, world events take precedence over everything else. But I had a phenomenal time. Uh, I've caught up on so much professional wrestling. A lot of interesting messages I got when I was away uh, for a week or so about Warner and the deal coming up. So we'll talk about all of that. But very interesting time uh, for everything. But we're, we're going to obviously concentrate about professional wrestling here. Uh, MG, I was gone, my producer. I was gone for a week. What yes, did sir. you do? I was gone. Were you lonely? Uh, I... I was a little lonely. Uh, I got some. I got some extra stuff done around the house. Um, I've been really into gardening lately. Believe it or not. And great, great. Maybe so you could do a gardening show here on like Sports that. Byline. Maybe that's what's next. Yeah, for I'm you. sure. I'm. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure they. We could call it that. in the weeds. I think that's a professional wrestling podcast Wait, with what? that name. Yeah, I think that's a show already <laughs> with that name. Uh, but you know, I next week we start again here. We're doing. Uh, I got to do four shows next week. Outside of this, obviously, I do uh, with Garrett Gonzalez. I do a great show called We're Live Pal on Tuesdays. I do a show for Fightful uh, called Beyond the Bell Tuesday mornings. I do Matt Men podcast on Friday after Friday morning. So we're very busy here. And we have all different perspectives of, you know, coverage depending on the show. This is more the news. I know you guys want the news here and you guys want the summaries of what's going on. So that's what we're going to do. Let's start off with SmackDown. Um. Uh, I was at SmackDown a couple weeks ago, and it was fantastic. It was at the Garden. I had a great time. The kids had a great time. Uh, They are really heavily continuing this Bloodline story. And the discourse online was that maybe this was the week that it got a little long in the tooth. 
But you're going to have those episodes, right? House of the Dragon, one of the biggest shows on television today on Max. Generally, by the third or fourth, you know, it slows down a little bit and it picks up again. Maybe that's where we're at right now, waiting for Roman to return. We've already seen the sides getting picked here between the Usos on one side and the new bloodline on the other. Heyman has picked his side, obviously, his allegiance to Roman. So how are we going to do this split? Is this leading to a Survivor Series? Is this leading to a War Games? Which, I, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world that this becomes, you know, the civil war of that family and you go into War Games and make that thing a bloody mess. I dare them. I dare them to do a proper War Games with the Samoans and the Tongans. But that's really where we're headed. So how do you split the team? I, and that's something I've been thinking about. You know, obviously Roman, Jay and Jimmy on one side. Who else gets added to that side? You have Hikaleo in the mix, possibly coming in. You have the Tongans. So it's four against three. So does Dwayne show up? What do you think, MJ? I, I, I am... Uh, I like yeah I, I don't i'm in the same boat i'm like i don't know where to go with this because first of all okay so there's other aspects of this too um does Sami Zayn get involved because they could they could recall that you know? oh and you know what that Jake, would be i would i would you know, not hate that i would actually re no I, I wouldn't either i keep forgetting about sammy and that's an important part yeah. here because sammy has not yeah, been involved in this mm -hmm. but you got to remember he's on he's on raw Jay Uso's on Raw, so how do they flip them SmackDown to make this work and make it not just be a jump the shark moment? They're gonna have to. Just They're gonna have to do it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know. They're gonna have mm -hmm. to do it. There's so, no question about it. So if you're gonna do that, that's the thing that keeps getting stuck in my brain is how are you gonna legitimately and realistically make me believe that this is okay? By oh yeah, we're just gonna pull him right off of Raw without. They, there has to be a story beat there that explains. I'm that. sure they could figure that out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you especially know, with they, Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman running this whole thing because that's who I think is largely uh, kind yeah. of pitching the. Well, ideas. listen, Kevin Owens. You know, Kevin Owens has been a target of the bloodline, and there's an actual mm -hmm. connection yeah. there. You know, there there's a there's a way to go through that lineup and, and maybe, bring maybe him it in. Ends up being. Maybe it ends up being an all-star team against the bloodline. And that's where we go. I don't think of... you got, no, you got to keep it as a civil war. You got it. I, 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 I mean, know. it's such a natural just, story there. It's it is such a natural but story, like, but Dwayne, but, but the rock is going to play a part in this. He has he to play a part in this. Absolutely. So either he's going to be the one that unites them, which I don't see that happening, or he's going to turn on one side and could mm -hmm. quite frankly, it could be, he turns on Roman and that's how you set up the match. For WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and now and you have it built. Guys... It's not. It's not that Roman just, you know, Dwayne just showed up and challenged him. Now you have a complex story of this family feud that's happening. And quite frankly, maybe it's just one of these guys that are going to turn up, flip, flip over to the other side. Like I, I thought maybe Jacob Fatu was going to be that guy. Maybe he still is. Maybe he's playing he's great. horse right now. He's so good. He's... I, menacing he's so fluid and and he's he he leaned down so much and he's yeah. quicker everything he does is crisp his story is so, captivating yeah. you know he he told mm -hmm. a story uh i think when he was in mlw when uh you know he was like a wild teen mm -hmm. and he went away he went to jail and he had tv you know there was a tv and what does he see on the tv his two cousins on the grandest yep. stage on television, multi-millionaires doing what they love, and he's sitting in jail, and and that was a moment that of reflection for him to to change things over. Wake up call, yep. And you know what? That's on. That's a that's a really captivating story. He was a kid. He was a teenager. Listen, men, our brains don't grow till we're like forty five. I still got a couple <laughs> more years left. So uh, I thought it was interesting. So SmackDown, Cody come out. He got a promo on Solo and the Bloodline. It's interesting how Solo, uh, you know, Jacob has really become the focus here, of the conversation and the discourse online. Uh, I'm curious if this is going to lead to something with Solo and him eventually. Essentially, he vowed to get revenge for hurting uh, Randy Orton. 
and it led to the to what we saw at the end. Andrade defeated Carmelo Hayes. Nice TV match. They're really trying to push Carmelo here. They're they're trying they're to making, get him over. Yeah. Well, you Slowly. can see, right? You got Carmelo on here. That's the next generation coming up. You got Grayson Waller coming up. You got Austin Theory coming up. You know, you got all the all the young guys in the bloodline now coming up. So they're doing a good job here. We got a bizarre Bailey and Nia segment also. Where Bailey pretty much said that <laughs> Nia was big, clumsy, and reckless. She told the truth. She told and, the truth. Yeah, she really. told the truth, and Jax got flustered and walked <laughs> off. <laughs> if if uh, anybody that's listened to Brian uh, Alvarez on the week, Who's that? Who's Brian? I don't know. He's this guy. He's Did you see where guy. he was? He's in the middle of nowhere watching uh, Tom Lawler wrestle in an empty field somewhere. <laughs> Did you see that on his social media? I, I, him and Vinny went on like a, an excursion. <laughs> but no, I I didn't see that. But yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. I was just saying that this was been critiquing her her work over the years has been his one of his life goals, I guess. Yeah. So oh, Brian Brian is a pro at that. He probably just got tickled. He probably got tickled at that uh, line. Yeah. Uh, a lot, you know, a lot of steps here going on. We're going to go to a quick break here. We're going to come back and I'll touch on some of the other things happening on SmackDown, like LA Knight and Logan Paul and, and the ending of the show. And then we'll talk about collision here. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Guys, do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. On X, I should call. Maybe he's going to change the name back. I'll call my friend Elon. I'll ask him. On X, follow me, at Andrew Zarian. The LA Knight, Logan Paul stuff is interesting. Uh, they had their contract signing. Logan said he didn't know why LA Knight was getting the shot. He wasn't at his level, and he tried to walk out of the ring. Uh, I'm into this match. Uh, I know that this was planned a while ago, and they moved it to this point. Uh, a lot of people within WWE believe that LA Knight will win this title. I think it's time for him to win the title. You know, the rise of LA Knight started really after that disastrous lights out match with Bray Wyatt. They he really uh there was a renaissance for him after that. And that was quite that was a year and a half ago. So they've been trying to pull the trigger on him for a year and a half, but they haven't. Little by little, now we're at this point. You know, this this is this is a, a important moment for LA Knight. Logan Paul's a great heel for him to go up against. Both are cocky, both are arrogant, both are great wrestlers, very different styles. I'm very curious to see if they put the title on LA Knight. I would expect them to do that at this point. I think it's time. Logan could take a couple a little bit of time off. He could come back, but uh very impressive by impressed by both of them. And this is a SummerSlam match. LA Knight has to win this, right? I would think so. Uh, it, it just it feels that way. And, and you're right. I think the the mystique of Logan Paul will be better if he goes away for a bit and then comes back. Um, That's what he does so, always. But I think, you know, you could do it yeah, without the title and think, you could have him win, maybe have him in a different position here. I just think it makes sense to do it that way. And then when he does come back, we'll be, oh, this guy again. Yeah. And, He'll start all over, and then you'll go, wait a minute. He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mitch in defeating Tiffany Stratton here. Tiffany's getting better every time she's on TV. This was, so this match uh, was more about Bailey and Nia yeah. Jack setting up that program. And uh, Bailey destroyed the briefcase, the Money in the Bank briefcase. <laughs> so there's <Yeah>. that. <laughs> Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens defeated A-Town Down Under. 11 minutes, 59 seconds after the match, the bloodline came out and tried to take out Cody and Kevin Owens. Jacob uh, will come out and single-handedly take, take out Kevin Owens, triple power bomb to Cody to end the show. So that's where we're at. I like that they're utilizing the shield triple power bomb. He just did that hip attack thing over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. Uh, I, I'm very intrigued by that guy. Uh, was this a great SmackDown? It was a fine SmackDown. It was okay. But this is just mm -hmm. leading more into the story. AEW Dynamite. 250. 
couple weeks ago, before I went away, I tweeted out, or I, I actually, I mentioned on Map Men, or was it Beyond the Bell? I can't remember, that I was told, point blank, that for that show, they will have a, a mega pay-per-view main event level match. Okay, word for word how it was said. At the time, I said, this could be doo-doo. This could be nonsense. I, I had, listen, summer's busy. I had no time to verify it. But, I mean, it was said to me in that way. Man, we got it. MJF and Osprey in a 60-minute match. They went 59-58, 59-57 for the international title. MJF won. I thought this was a great match. And then you go online and you see <laughs> just the most ridiculous discourse over this match. And at this point, listen, I how can anybody watch this that comprehends professional wrestling and understands the importance of doing unique experiences like this? Go online right and just start saying, oh, this was terrible. This match was terrible. I, you know, what? One, one thing is, you know, 60 minutes or not, I enjoyed the 60 minutes. Could it have been, would it have been as good at 42 minutes? Sure, I'm positive it would have. But I like that they did something very unique. It was a three-match show. It was formatted very differently. And that's unique. That's different. That's what we need in professional wrestling. Not every show for every company needs to be formatted the same exact way. You got to see two of, you know, the next decade of professional wrestling will revolve around these two guys. They're two of the most important people in the wrestling business right now. And Tony put on a display. For all those people that say that MGF can't work long matches and can't work a different style. This dude did tremendous. Will Ospreay, uh, arguably the best pro wrestler today. And the discourse is flooding the narrative here. I, I, I actually, out of all the things that I watched, I was able to get this on when I was away. And I watched it. I watched it on the beach on my iPad, but I watched it. I, I thought it was fantastic. Could you nitpick and say, well, you know, a Styles clash off the second rope, you know, and that's a transitionary move? You could say that about everything. It's professional wrestling. None of it makes sense sometimes. The story is that these guys do not want to lose, and the will within them is doing things that most men and women could never do, and that's kick out of a Styles clash from the, from the top rope or second rope, whatever it was. Can we just watch it? You know, I, wa I watched Die Hard the other day, okay? John McClane. I don't sit there and say, you know, this is really phony, guys. There's no way that one, you know, drunk cop is able to take down an entire terrorist operation. In that building and save everybody. That that's a leap of of ability. That's impossible. I don't watch Terminator and say, well, you know, time traveling, you know, robots. Watch it as a television show. That's what it is. But wrestling is weird, right? There's it's a very weird thing where certain people still, to some extent, believe that there's a re real aspect to this. Which I'm sure, yeah, there is, but. You also have magic men. You have you have uh, uh, undeads. You have zombies. You have vampires. You have ghouls. You have Frankenstein monsters. And you also have the art of professional wrestling. And that's what this match was. I loved it. Fantastic. Setting up the future here. I don't have a problem with it. The only thing that was weird on that show, really, was that Okada match was the schmaz at the end. Okada and, and, and um, Swerve. But... Do you think they should have flipped him? Do you think they should have flipped the matches? 
No, no. I'm glad that this opened it. I'm okay. glad that it's it opened it because it really set the precedence. You, you killed that first hour, and then the the rest was easy. You know, you had a, you had Mercedes come out there. Mercedes put mm -hmm. on a good match. Uh, you had, and the ending. The and and you talked about younger stars. Mariah May cut a fantastic promo in the middle of it to kind of break. Oh, up as the show. so you know what's crazy? I saw the Tony uh, the Tony Schiavone uh, clip, which I can't oh, say the on the radio. He, yeah. <laughs> uh, where he started screaming, and I, to, because remember, I'm I'm away, so I turned it off after that match, and I went back, and I was, you know, I went on Twitter for like two seconds. I really was that disconnected, was so but it was like two seconds, and I'm like, oh, I thought he liked Tony Storm. I didn't. It didn't hit me that that was Mariah because they look so alike. Mm -hmm. That was remarkable. I thought it was yeah, fine. That was fantastic. That's that that for me now is number two match I want to see it all in. At all in. Just based on that story. The that story a couple weeks ago with yeah. her swerving on Tony Storm was great. Yeah. Um what you know what you could do after this break? If you could put me that card together, because I don't have it in front of me. And I think we need to start talking about all in a little bit more because it's almost here. We're in July, guys. It's mid July twenty first. It's five weeks away. Five weeks away? I can't believe the summer's over. It's over. <laughs> Just started and it's over. I gotta get more of a tan. Look at this. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get that Hogan color. It's getting difficult. Skin of a leather. Skin of a hot dog. That's what it is. Skin <laughs> of a hot dog. Ballpark Frank. That's that's the color I want to get. None of that Nathan's. I don't want to get a Nathan's color. I want a ballpark prank. Ballpark Frank or a uh what's the other one? Sabath? I don't know. Now we're talking about hot dogs here. I've I'm lost not, all control of the show. This is my I'm first not. show back. I'm coming back slowly, <laughs> little by little. My brain is rotting here. Uh, no, I thought it was. I thought it was a fun show. Next week, you're gonna have you're gonna have uh, blood and guts, which we'll talk about. We're gonna have Chris Jericho against Minoru Suzuki because Minoru Suzuki came out and challenged them and banned the Learning Tree from ringside. We got the debut of the glamour Mariah May. And MJF is speaking. So we got a really packed couple weeks here. When we come back from break, we're going to talk about Collision and the new set and their residency. And also Slammiversary. 4,000 people at a TNA show. The most attended TNA show in over a decade? Yeah, has to be. Wow, they did tremendous there. I think that Chicago show that they did was the biggest, right? I, I got to get the number on the break. But when we come back, all this and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's talk about collision here. AEW, by the way, a lot of conversation about their TV rights happening. We're going to get our answer very, very shortly. You can already see certain things are changing. On Friday, people in France were reporting that AEW archives were on Max. Great. I've said it's going to happen for a year and a half now. Many things came in, and it's delayed it. Uh, you know what's the other thing? You know, I, I and MG, you, in the audience... People have been talking about when this contract actually expires. And a lot of people are under the assumption that it's expiring like November or October. It doesn't expire till January 2025, their deal. So right. I somebody asked me that over the week and, and I and I was like, I believe it's January. And I confirmed it ends in January. So obviously there's some time here, but the deal is close. It's I felt that when I was at that show at UBS Arena for the pay-per-view for Forbidden Door, a lot of people were, there was a lot of chatter regarding how close they were. Tony has said that they're in the red, they're in the red zone. I don't know what yard line they're at. Maybe they're at the 10. I think they're at the 10. <laughs> Maybe the ball's in the air for the touchdown. The guy's grabbing it. Tony's about to, he's leaping in the air to grab it. It's right in his hands. But it's going to happen. It just, now the question is, okay, well, what's included here? Did you just uh, compare uh, 
Tony Khan to Obel o- o- Beckham Jr. I compare I him to Obel did. Beckham. Yeah, one hand, one handed like this. He's grabbing it. <laughs> um, I listen. I, I again, people want it to fail, and I don't understand how that's healthy for the for the entire industry. You are not a fan of the business if if you are you're chanting for this man to fail and for this company to fail. Take your personal... I, I mean, listen, people do the same with WWE. They've done it for years. You want this thing to go away? That 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 you get this enjoyment out of, whether it's a negative enjoyment or a positive enjoyment? You hate watch it daily. What are you going to do with your life? Nothing. Just going to sit there and find something else to complain about. I The deal's happening. It's just a matter of, okay, how much money, right? Uh, will it be distributed on Max, which I believe it, it is. Obviously, that's very much part of the deal. Will there be simulcasting, which is very important right now? We see what, what it does with the NBA. Uh, cable is in less homes than ever before. TN, TNT and TBS were, you know, 98 million homes or 90-something million homes. Now it's under 70 million. You have Max that has, you know, let's say 80 million uh, domestic. That's another avenue for you to get more viewers. These are all the questions in air. And Ring of Honor, honestly, I have never heard one person mention Ring of Honor to me from anybody that is at uh, WBD. I've never had a conversation about Ring of Honor. It's never been brought up. And that says something. Or it doesn't. I don't know. I could only say what I'm what I'm hearing. But it looks like things are going to be in the positive here. The ratings have been growing every week. Tony's doing some really captivating television. Next week, Dynamite is going to be even better. Because you're going to have blood and guts. And that's a big story. We're just getting there. He's rebuilding this. Hopefully, it'll work for him. AW Collision opened up in their new building. What did you think of the, the arena? The eSport Arena. It was, yeah, it, it at first it was that long stage. I felt like there was a lot of space, but I get it. I because that's that is the arena for when they do for gaming, right? Professional great gaming. So that that video wall is everything. But yeah, it just had that, and then the ring in front of it. So it took some getting used to. And I yeah. also thought the audio was weird, weirdly mic'd. The audio was weird. Well, the TNA show also mm. was uh, was very weirdly miked. They, uh, uh, you know, it, it's growing. You're in a new building. It's a static building. I don't know if they had a different crew there that's going to be static in Texas. You know, there were I don't know. There were there were some issues, lighting issues too. But I think they'll they'll get those for next week. Yeah. You know, you don't know what it's going to finally look like until you do it on TV. And now now they saw it. Uh, it was a unique setup. Now what? It's, it looked like a Ring of Honor show. And I made this joke, and I said it to someone that happens to work there. And I said, you know, if Ring of Honor in 2017 had made all the right decisions, this is what this show would have looked like. And the person wrote, please don't tweet that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm serious. I'm like, it looked like a great Ring of Honor presentation, but... It was almost like an alternate reality of what wrestling would be like if Ring of Honor existed and TNA was gone. You know, you're getting the Beast Mortis, Mortos, and Darby Allen. Do you know they wrestled 2019 in PWG? Great opener. Wow. This was fantastic. There was a spot where uh, Mortos uh, did some sort of flippy thing off the top rope to Darby. And Darby is such a great bumper for yeah. getting moves over anybody big it yeah was great yeah yeah very good match good presentation for darby darby seemed to get hurt a little bit in that match because during his promo he was mumbling to himself like man that really hurt so i don't know what spot it mm-hmm. was uh but he said he's ready to die on wednesday <laughs> in blood and guts so i guess he's falling <laughs> off the top of that thing yeah he'd be the guy <laughs> if i was gonna pick somebody that would be yeah. my, that would be my front run yeah <laughs> so we'll see what happens there. He'd be like you... minus two hundred to go over the top of the cage. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm betting. I, I, that's not a good bet for me to take. You're gonna have to dump no. a lot of money in to win. 
Uh, the acclaim was backstage. Max Caster was joking around, and Billy Gunn lost his mind, and he said, "Let's focus." You know, as Blood and Guts was in a game. Was yeah, it was yeah, good. I thought this was really good. Mm -hmm. So this is where things got wacky. Sheeta defeated Sky Blue by ref stoppage. So Sheeta went for a dive on the outside onto Sky Blue. Sky Blue went down, and she could not get back up, and she was in pain. Mm -hmm. She, uh, it was. You could tell instantly something was going on. Tony reported that she, it was an ankle injury. Yeah. So I don't know the severity uh, of this, but well, someone posted uh, an, um, someone in the venue obviously posted something of her walking back. She was with the doctor. The do doctors were ho uh, basically holding her up, and she was crying. She was in tears. Yeah, this yeah, she was like crying. Yeah, this looks like it might be. Uh, I, I haven't heard any updates on it, um, but this looks like it might be something that's going to be like a long time to heal. Yeah, well, Dalton Castle also got hurt, and he's out for the remainder mm -hmm. of the year. That's another. That's another injury that company's facing. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, best thoughts to Sky Blue. She, she, you know, she is a next generation talent, and she's she was yeah. on a roll here. The good and... news is there's some. The good news is the women's division has depth now. So yeah, tremendous you know. depth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Tony confirmed it was an ankle injury. So this went, and so now things got wacky because now they got to make time. Because obviously mm -hmm. they had given this match a little bit of time here. So they went to a video package. They went backstage. Lance Archer's killing everybody. And he's screaming. I feel like he does this. I feel like he does this like every six months. We get yeah, a every Lance time, Archer every beating time. people up. <laughs> Every then, time and then he goes there's, a, there's a mishap, no. right? There's a mishap. <laughs> there's something happened. A match ends too early. They got to cut away. They're like, Bert, where's Lance? Let him kill somebody backstage. And then we don't see him for six months. It yeah. feels like. <laughs> yeah. Chris Sharka cut a promo on Minoru Suzuki. Jericho warned Suzuki that this would be a dream match for everyone except Suzuki. I'm looking forward to that. I love these bizarre oh, Minoru Suzuki matches. You know, this is, at the end of the day, this really is Tony playing E-Simulator in the best way. Yeah. Right? Like, Minara Suzuki, Chris Jericho, cool. Ten years ago, do you think that we would have ever thought that match would be a thing? No. Never. Mm -hmm. Now we have this option to see these two crazy old men fight. It's fantastic. Ray Phoenix defeated Tony Nese. Tony looks fantastic. FTR promo on how the Young Bucks have run the tag division while they've been gone. So it looks like it's leading to FTR and the Bucks again at All In. Roderick Strong defeated Tomohiro Ishii. The Kingdom came out from the crowd and distracted Ishii, causing uh, the win. Strong hit a low blow and knocked uh, and the knockout knee for the win. Also, Hologram debuted against Gringo Loco. I, like I thought this match. was great. You know what? This was a great match. I'm, I'm, I've been told certain things about that hologram presentation over the like the the years of what the concept was. So I'm curious to see if it plays out. Uh, very good match. I I enjoy this. Nice lucha match. We got a lumberjack match. Deanna Perazzo, Perazzo defeated Thunder Rosa, and a unified AEW trios match. The patriarchy. Now, the unified trios champions defeating the Bang Bang Gang. Juice Robinson, Austin. Austin and Colt Gunn to win the vacated titles. All right, cool. It was it was a and fun presentation. One, one note about that, and, yeah. and I don't know if you caught it. Christian Cage holding all three titles like he did the uh, of course TN fantastic TNT title. Yeah, when he didn't have the title, he, he's holding them all. So he said he won it for them, but he's going to hold all the titles. He's going to have course. all three in his hand every time. Yeah. And it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, TNA last night, slam anniversary, four thousand people in the building, Montreal. We got a couple of minutes, and I and I'm oh. running out of time, but I wanted to touch on this because I thought this was a very important show for TNA. That building was slammed, the crowd was hot. My buddy Joel Pearl was there, a couple other friends were there. Big story here. Uh, we got a Montreal screw job finish. Speedball Mike Bailey defeated Mustafa Ali. The rep was knocked down. Earl Hebner came out. Earl refused to do the count for. Mustafa Ali, he did the Montreal screw job on him he and then teased did, it. He, he teased, teased it. it three times and, and then, didn't ring the bell. And then finally, finally, when uh, um, Speedball got got the submission, he counted the submission because yeah. it was a clear tap. Very fun and stuff. Was, uh, also, yeah. the main event here Nick Nemeth 
won the TNA World title. Moose was eliminated first by Joe Henry, who was a fan. Of, the crowd was going nuts for him. Uh, a lot of people thought that Henry would win this. The crowd was very much behind him. Josh Alexander delivered a low blow to Henry, uh, turning heel, and the crowd was not happy. Uh, Nick Nemeth then. Who did Nick pin? Uh, not He didn't pin uh, Alexander. Kazarian. Frankie Kazarian. Kazarian. He, Nick I Nemeth believe. pinned uh, Frankie, mm-hmm. yeah. I thought this was great. I mm-hmm. thought, you know, they, they're doing stuff. something here. For TNA in 2024, this company cannot go away. It is, it is no. evident that they, are, they will forever be a part of professional wrestling. Uh, this was a big deal for them. 4,000 people. Now they're this like is... a sub, they're a sub feeder for um, uh, NXT now. Yeah. I mean, you're going back well, and forth. It's listen, that's going to help them. That's going to help them. But remember, yeah. this, is, this was the biggest attended show that they've had in, in a decade. Yep. Maybe over a decade. I think 2011, probably a decade. 2013, maybe. Uh, this is a great sign it, 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 for, for wrestling. Forget about TNA, but for wrestling. You know, it's different. People are everywhere now. People are working together. This is a positive to have. The fact that, the fact that Bloodsport, and I'll talk about this after the break, Bloodsport is featuring talent from everywhere, including WWE and NXT. Says a lot. State of professional wrestling. It's, it's all healthy. When we come back, a little bit more before we end the show. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final few minutes of the show. I think we covered a lot here today. But Josh Barnett's Bloodsport coming up next weekend. Full of WWE talent. And independent talent. Mike Santana versus Homicide. I want to see this. (laughs) That's a match I want to see. You got Julius Creed in this. You got uh, uh, Shayna Baszler. You got Mike Bailey. You got Josh Woods. You got Timothy Thayer. You got Charlie Dempsey. Tom Lawler. Brutus Creed. This Brutus is a Creed pack. versus Tom Lawler. That's going to be fantastic. Think about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who's that? Charlie Dempsey is who? Uh, uh, Royce Isaacs, Royce right? Royce Isaac. Yeah. yeah. Who's in New Japan. So, who's yeah. in New Japan. Yeah. Uh, I think this is cool. Cool. Uh, Masha Slamovich and Jody Threat. Another cool match. This is interesting to see WWE embracing this. Uh, this is a new, listen, if I'm looking at it, this is the best PR they could do about their company when it comes to uh, independent contract laws. Look, we let people go work other places. If it's fitting, if they want to do it, they're more than welcome to do it. Mm-hmm. Here, look, go to Bloodsport, go to TNA. It protects them, really. Sometimes it's not the kindest in there, you know, it's for reasons. But I think this is this is really great. Uh, this week, we're going to have a big week in wrestling. Obviously, more news coming out about the, the AEW deal uh, with Warner. That's coming pending. Maybe they do it at all in. I don't know. You have a really good show for Blood and Guts. You got Raw coming up. SummerSlam is heating up where it's going to be CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. That's going to be the big story here. Punk's return. What is it? His third or fourth match since returning a year ago? Something a like lot that. of moving parts yeah. here. A lot of moving parts. But next week, we'll be back with a whole new episode of Wrestling Observer Live and everything that's happening in the world professionally. Until next time, guys. Take care.